Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Cam. Welcome to another review. Today we're gonna go to Japan. I'm very excited to have a Grand Seiko on the channel again. As you might remember, we made a review already on the past, which you guys really like. Swiss Watch Cam is not only focused on Swiss watches as the name would imply, but we also have appreciation for German watchmaking and in this case, Japanese watchmaking. I actually used to own a Grand Seiko myself that was quite a few years ago. It was the GMT model SBGJ001, which I dearly loved. And I also put it on a leather strap like you see on this example. That one had a high beat movement of 36,000 vibrations per hour, but this one features the legendary spring drive movement. There's no doubt that the Snowflake model is one of the most popular models by Grand Seiko. And if people decide to buy a watch with a spring drive movement, they usually go for that one. The name Snowflake didn't come from the collector community, but Grand Seiko itself. For this instance, this one is called the Blue Snowflake. But here, the collectors have, I think, a better name for it, nicknamed the Skyflake. The Skyflake, of course, due to the beautiful baby blue color of the dial, that's why I also match my shirt today. As you can imagine, there's not that many Grand Seiko retailers in Switzerland. In fact, there's only one official distribution which is in Bern and the retail is called Ursachen. Ursachen also lent me this watch for the review so I'm super thankful to them and check out their Instagram channel in the description below. Most of you know the Seiko range of watches which tend to be very affordable, accurate and very durable. Grand Seiko is the high range of their watches and actually Seiko and Grand Seiko are now separate entities because of the branding as well as the price range and also they want to implement a luxury appeal to the Grand Seiko name, which you just don't get sometimes with the normal Seiko models. Grand Seiko was actually introduced in 1960 and the goal was to be a competition to the high-end luxury Swiss watch brands. The level of finishing of Grand Seiko is something that most people admire. And I would also agree if you compare the Grand Seiko model that I have in my hands today and watches in the same price range, you will not find the same level of finishing. The exact model reference is the SBGA400 and it's from the Elegance collection. The Snowflakes case and bracelet are in the Heritage collection, that's why they are not really similar. Personally, I prefer the color of the Skyflake versus the Snowflake. I would just switch out the case and the bracelet. So what do you look forward to when you buy a Grand Seiko? You look forward to seeing the Zeratsu finish and also the dial. Depends on which one you choose, you have a wide array of dial options and also case shapes and materials and also movements. The Zarazzo finishing and the dials are made in the Shinshu Watt Studio in Japan and the pattern of the dial which is actually stamped mimics the snow and the winter season. The applied indexes are an art form in itself. They're super well polished, again implying the Zarazzo finish. So what is Zarazzo finish? It's a Japanese pronunciation of the name of a European company that used to make a polishing machine. You can compare it to black polishing, it has no distortion and it has a mirror-like effect. At this price point, the case, the indexes, the hands and all of the smaller components on the dial are actually polished by hand. At 3 o'clock you have the date window which has a beautifully polished frame as well. Again, you guessed it, with the Zarazzo finish. You pull out the crown to the first position and then you change the date. Very standard, like you're used to already. Between 7 and 8 o'clock you have a cutout power reserve indicator which again, the hands are beautifully polished and there's two different finishing styles within. The outer part of the power reserve indicator kinda reminds me of a guilloche pattern. This model has a power reserve of 72 hours or 3 days, so don't be afraid to put down your watch, take the next one and pick it up the other day again. What I always admired in Grand Seiko watches is their hour and minute hand. They're super cool, sharp as a katana, again, polished to the perfection. And just when they're above each other, I really like that look because they just disappear and they look like a sword. The logo at 12 o'clock is also applied and the Grand Seiko name is printed on it. At 6 o'clock you also have an indication that this watch has a spring drive movement in it. You might have noticed the gliding second hand. It doesn't have a ticking movement or 8 steps or 10 steps, no. It has a gliding movement. And you'll see why when I turn the watch around. Before we get to that, the second hand here is also heated blue, not just painted. You can see how the light bounces off from the Zarazzo finish components on the dial side. If I turn it to myself a bit, it becomes a bit more black. Now it starts to shine when I put it a bit towards the light. It's super cool. And again, very 3D. And I just love how they executed this. So let's get now to the start of the show. Something that took years and years of development. And when they finally achieved it, it was pretty revolutionary for the watchmaking industry across the globe. 
the spring drive movement. As you can see, this watch features an automatic winding rotor and <laughs> you can also notice that the case spec is mirror polished or Zaratsu because you can see me in it. Anyway, you can wind the watch via the automatic rotor or also by hand just by turning the crown clockwise. It has a bit of a weird noise, listen to it now. Not what you get from a standard Swiss watch with a fully mechanical movement, is it? There's a lot of controversy if you can really compare a spring drive movement to a normal Swiss mechanism. To keep it simple, the spring drive is a unique movement that combines the high torque of a mechanical watch with the precision of the integrated circuit or IC control system. So it's a unique movement that combines the high torque of a mechanical watch with the high precision of a quartz watch or electronic watch. It took over 28 years to develop and 600 prototypes later they achieved it. The main goal was to remove the use of batteries and also give a higher precision to a mechanical watch, which they definitely achieved. There's a small wheel here which resembles a balance wheel in a mechanical watch. In this instance, it's not. This is actually a glide wheel. So a balance wheel oscillates back and forth, back and forth. This one just turns in one direction. And now you maybe know why the second's hand glides and doesn't tick. The movement inside this model is the Caliber 9R65 and it's actually accurate to plus and minus one second per day and plus or minus 15 seconds per month on average which is just insane. You'll see that the cost states the watch needs to be accurate to minus four to plus six seconds a day and the meta certification requires that a watch must keep time within zero and five seconds deviation in any position. Of course, watches with COSC certification and META certification don't include any electronic devices or circuits within. So the spring drive has a bit of the upper hand here. That's why some people also find it a bit controversial and not fair to compare those movements. I'm gonna try to simplify how this system works, but also put the few links in the description so you guys can dive a bit deeper into this topic. So the automatic rotor or via the crown actually winds the mainspring barrel. Then the mainspring barrel, when it unwinds, it transfers energy and of course this winding torque to the gear train and also into the gliding wheel which you can see from the case pack. This gliding wheel is also regulated by two magnets. The gliding wheel in combination with the coil generates an electrical impulse which gets sent to the integrated circuit and then goes to the quartz crystal. The high end concentrate of the quartz crystal then sends back the energy to the integrated circuit. The integrated circuit then calculates the deviation and adjusts the spinning rate of the gliding wheel, which again affects the timekeeping accuracy. Apart from the movement being very efficient, it's also nice to look at. We have the Geneva stripes, or in this case, Tokyo or Japan stripes, on the rotor and also on the whole movement, which is really cool. And when you turn it around, the light bounces off it super nicely. On the rotor, you have also the Grand Seiko logo and the name on it, with a bit of a blue color. Something which is barely visible is the Grand Seiko logo on the sapphire crystal on the case pack. Let me now put the watch on the wrist and show you guys how it fits me. The clasp is inspired by vintage Grand Seiko watches, it has the Grand Seiko name and beneath it's a bit frosted. This particular strap is a crocodile leather strap, it's dark blue with dark blue stitching and let me tell you, for a new strap it's extremely comfortable. The thickness of the Zaratsu polished case is 12.8 millimeters and from the side you can also see the box shaped sapphire crystal. It has a diameter of 40.2 millimeters and I think it's just the perfect size for me. Just for reference I have an 18.1 centimeter wrist size but you can also wear this watch in a smaller wrist. This case is also waterproof to 100 meters so you can easily wash your hands with this watch but again I wouldn't push it. The price of the Skyflake is 6,400 Swiss francs, which I think is a good deal for a watch with this amount of finishing and this accuracy. Definitely, if you have the chance, go check out the Grand Seiko and be sure to bring a loop with you. Let me know what you think about Grand Seiko watches, which is your favorite one and do you like the spring drive mechanism? Leave a comment down below, like this video and share with somebody who likes Grand Seiko watches as well. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week.